Hey everyone, my name is Rick and today I'll be going over the proper way of storing a pH electrode. The short answer is to always use the proper storage solution, which for most is 3 molar potassium chloride for your typical silver silver chloride electrode. The rest of this video goes on to explain why that is. We start by going over the basics of how an electrode works and then going into how that functionality can be affected by different methods of storage. A pH electrode is made of a measuring half cell and a reference half cell, each of which contains a wire surrounded by solution. A voltage potential is created by the hydrogen ion sensitive gel on the glass bulb and the wires on either side measure that difference. That is as much as you need to know for this video, but we have an article linked in the description that can explain the concepts further if you are curious. Accurate measurements are relying on a stable connection between the wires, and there are two limiting factors for this connection that are related to storage. One is the reference electrolyte. This solution is typically 3 molar potassium chloride of neutral pH and is exposed to the sample solution through the junction. Over time, the sample diffuses through the junction to dilute the reference, which destabilizes the circuit connection. Once dilution occurs, Either new electrolyte must be added if the electrode is refillable, or the electrode must be replaced depending on the design of the sensor. Using the proper storage solution prevents this dilution so you get the most value out of your pH sensors in the long run. The other factor is the pH sensitive gel, which must remain hydrated and free of damage. Storage in any liquid prevents it from dehydrating and from damage, but extremely high or low pH solutions do degrade performance if left for extended periods of time. Let's look at a few examples of storage and go over the pros and cons. First is going to be dry storage, which is bad for both factors mentioned previously. As you can see, the reference electrolyte slowly evaporates through the junction. Eventually, the electrolyte no longer contacts the reference wire and the electrode stops functioning. In addition, the pH sensitive gel layer on the outside of the glass dehydrates when left out of solution, even if only for an hour or two. If not left out for long, then it may be rehydrated by soaking in 3 molar potassium chloride for up to 24 hours, but it is possible that the electrode never stabilizes or responds as quickly again. Next is storage in RODI or tap water. Now, this makes sense as a storage method considering many pH electrodes like the ones from Phionics are designed for continuous measurement of water over years of time. This method does work for a few days or weeks of storage, but the whole point is to preserve the electrode so that it works just as well as it did before. When left in water, the gel stays wet, but the potassium and chloride ions in the electrolyte slowly diffuse through the junction to reach ionic equilibrium with the water. This also happens anytime the sensor is in use, so storing the electrode in water is essentially reducing the lifespan of the electrode by however long it's in storage. Storage in RODI water in particular will reduce the lifespan significantly more than most applications due to their low ionic content. Lastly is storage in proper storage solution, which for most electrodes is 3 molar potassium chloride. Fully saturated KCL solution is also fine. Unlike water, 3 molar KCL does not reduce the lifespan and allows you to get the full value out of your electrode, something which I think we're all trying to do considering how expensive they can be. In summary, the best storage solution is the same as the reference electrolyte. So that's it. The comment section is down below for any questions or feedback on the video. Please leave a like and subscribe for more useful content related to water quality sensors. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.